This is Newsbreak 26 in Southwest New Brunswick. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Here's what's happening in our part of the world. One of the fastest growing sports in Charlotte County has a long international history, dragon boat racing. The recently established St. Andrews Paddling Club successfully formed a dragon boat team that practiced three times per week over the summer at Katie's Cove. They have plans to compete interprovincially as early as 2020. The team is being helmed by former national team coach Pat Barker. Um, the sport started uh, about 2,000 years ago in China. It was first introduced to Canada in 1986 in Vancouver in False Creek um, when uh, it was part of the uh, transportation communication uh, theme of Expo 86. And Hong Kong sent over um, six dragon boats as a gift to Vancouver. And I moved to Vancouver in 85. We, a friend of mine introduced me to the sport. She said, we're starting a women's team and would you come out? And then in uh, 95, I wrote a book on the sport on dragon boating uh, that was published by Rainco's Books. And um, then got into you know, training with the national team and, and um, I was head coach of Team USA for two years. We're uh, planning on racing next year. We're picking two or three races. So, but the, you know, it's not just about racing. It's about the community, and it's about bringing uh, 20 people together in the boat. Uh, there's a drummer and a steers person. We've got kids that are 12 years of age in the boat, and we've, I, I, I'd be guessing how old our oldest person is, but certainly over 60. MP Karen Ludwig, MLA Andrea Anderson Mason, and Mayor Crystal Cook of St. George recently announced over $900,000 in federal and provincial funding for three projects to improve water and wastewater services in St. George. Projects include the construction and improvement of water wells to increase the supply of clean drinking water, improving sewer and water mains along Carlton and Portage streets, and updating the town's wastewater treatment system. The town of St. George is pleased to receive this funding from the federal and provincial governments. Investing in water and wastewater systems is a key factor for, for improving the lives of our residents. How to best deal with the alarming local deer population was once again a hot topic at the St. Andrews Town Council meeting on Monday night. The annual nuisance deer hunt was once again approved despite councillors having mixed opinions on its effectiveness. The first reading of the motion to increase the fine from $150 to $1,000 for feeding deer also took place. And a committee came forward that it was $1,000 for people uh, uh, feeding, uh, feeding deer intentionally. And uh, if, if councillors have a problem with that, then they, they can vote against the bylaw. But this is the wording that came forward at committee. Although discussions got heated, Mayor Doug Nash ended the meeting by applauding the council for their ongoing openness and transparency, especially when it comes to debating contentious issues in front of the public, including a TV audience. We don't meet at all other than in open session before the public, whether they come or not. And sometimes I think that uh, because of our coverage on TV, lots of people who don't come to the meetings meet me on the street and say, I saw the meeting from two weeks ago and I, I was interested, could you explain this to me? And we get those kinds of, that kind of feedback, which I think is very important. The summer might be nearing an end, but autumn festivities are just heating up, beginning with the annual Charlotte County Fall Fair on September 14th and 15th at Ganong Nature Park. Taking place the same weekend for the first time ever in Canada is a visit from the tall ship Neo Santa Maria, which will be docked at the St. Andrews Wharf from Friday, September 13th to Sunday the 15th. The tall ship is a replica of the vessel that was famously sailed across the Atlantic by Christopher Columbus in 1492 when he first explored North America. Those interested can take part in guided tours that will bring visitors back in time over five centuries into the age of exploration. That's all the news I have for you. For more stories and online exclusives, follow us on Facebook at chco.tv. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.